So this is the last panel of the morning, and we can read some of the films and so forth, some of the festivals we've been heard a lot in the previous panels. We have Angelica Cantisani from Torino Film Lab. We haven't Hola, heard about Torino días. Film Lab. <laughs> Buenos dias. Inke Van Loke del, uh, from uh, Rotterdam F uh, Film Festival. And Jarmila Otratova from Festival from Jiglava. So welcome. And um, this panel, um, we would like to discuss the importance of sharing a project, uh, fundraising and networking from your respective areas. So maybe we can just begin from with you just sharing what Torino Film Love, of course, everyone knows, but sharing your initiative from your perspectives, and just feel free to tell us good things about it. Yes, you want to start? Or yeah, yeah, they're I'm watching not assigning like any, I have to <laughs> <laughs> any turns. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Angelica, and I work for the Torino Film Lab. Torino Film Lab office is based in Turin, but uh, our uh, training program, our labs are all around Europe and all around the world. Uh, Torino Film Lab is 12 years old now and uh, it's mainly a training program for uh, uh, professionals and f um, with the, their first and second feature films. But two years ago we opened also to TV series and this year we opened also to documentaries but with another activity that I will tell you later. Uh, Torino Film Lab is also a co-production market that takes place at the end of November in Turin. And it's also uh, funding for uh, feature films. Uh, we cover some part of the cost uh, for pre-production and for audience design strategies. That's mainly what we do. And uh, last year we opened a new part of activity that is called the Torino Film Lab Extended. Um, that is something new because uh, our main programs are financed by uh, Creative Europe. And you, as you probably know, uh, Creative Europe is mainly for European projects. But as we received so many requests for non-European countries, we decided to open this new activity that is TFL Extended, that um, is open for t to everybody from all over the world. And uh, it's uh, just workshops that take place in Turin. And it's just four days long intensive workshops, you come with your project and you work with our tutors. So it's really something new that we just started and, and have to say that had a huge success. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, so I'm Inka and I work for the International Film Festival Rotterdam that takes place at the end of January next year, 23rd till 3 of February. Um, and as a festival, we screen feature films, around 250, but also 250 short films, ranging from more narrative to super experimental. Um, and in our films, we focus on both first, second, third time filmmakers, as well as more established uh, filmmakers. So, bright future and voices, we call it. Um, and the reason I'm mentioning that is because that editorial line follows through our, our initiatives. Um, a few years ago, we decided to put everything under the umbrella of IFFR Pro. Um, so we have the Hubert Balls Fund, for example, that supports uh, projects from DAC listed countries and script and development funding, but also you as a Spanish co-producer of a project from one of those countries can apply for funding for our uh, minority co-production support through Creative Europe. Um, we also have a co-production market called Cinemart. Every year we select around 16 feature film projects looking for financing but also creative partners. Uh, we have VR projects there. Um, and uh, I, I manage the co-production market but I also manage Rotterdam Lab which is our uh, workshop for um, we call it emerging producers, but it's producers that have their setting, setting up their own companies, working on their first, second features, starting to work internationally. Uh, and they come to Rotterdam for a five-day program, which is very much linked to the co-production market. Um, and, and we focus there on co-production uh, co case studies, financing, but also on personal development. So where Torino focus really on projects, we focus on you being a producer, and setting up your international network and, and sort of having access to that international market space. 
Uh, we have many more activities, but I think for the purpose of this, we'll I'll leave it here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so <coughs> is it working? Yeah, it's working. So first I have to make a compliment to you because everybody calls me Jarmila from Jihlava and you said it right. <laughs> it's Jarmila from Jihlava International Documentary Film Festival. And uh, it's the biggest uh, documentary film festival in Eastern Europe. And we, that, that's why we really focus on uh, Eastern European productions. But we also open up for, for the rest of the Europe. And um, I'm head of uh, industry office and we make a lot of activities for all the uh, filmmakers coming to Ihlava and, and the flagship of our program is called Emerging Producers. It's really called Emerging Producers. It's capital E. And um, when we uh, started this program, we really um, Googled and tried to find the words Emerging Producers together and it never existed eight years ago. And now everything seems emerging, emerging directors, emerging projects, emer everything is emerging. But we, we have to keep stick to this label already and we cannot change it. And we are very pr proud that it's growing. Uh, the origina uh, original idea of this project was that um, uh, pitching forums for documentary films started to make sense really 10 years ago and with, with the financial crisis everything TV commissioning TV editors stopped buying and invest uh, into projects of documentary films so we thought that it makes sense to help the producers to start co-productions uh, mainly in Europe and that's why this uh, program started it's not project based even though we help uh, producers to start co-productions, but uh, mm, the producers don't come with the project and don't work on the certain project. We say that the pro uh, producers are the projects themselves. They work on themselves, they present themselves, they pitch themselves, not the, their work and projects, and that's what is different from other uh, initiatives. We also do many other uh, programs, and maybe I'll get to, uh, to it later because we also work with projects, but for now, Emerging mm -hmm. Producers is not project-based. I know it's kind of obvious asking women that are running uh, professional workshops and professional development projects, uh, how important production hubs and uh, this kind of uh, professional spaces are, but if you could just give us like a, the key topics of why you should go into this kind of spaces to, in order to develop your projects. No turns aside. Okay, <laughs> go with it. Uh, I'd say one of the most important things is access to the international market. Um, you, you get you get your network there. Um, you you basically are building relationships also for the future of your other projects, and uh, it's it serves you. Uh, you can work together on other projects as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I also think that it, it opens your mind to other ways of working. Mm -hmm. It opens uh, new ways of financing your projects as well. Mm -hmm. um, and also developing not only uh, your project, but also yourself as a producer, I think is key in, in I think, all, the, all our workshops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on our side, I, I can add that um, as we are project-based, uh, being a network and work with other professionals really helps your uh, project because um, um, we mainly work in group sessions. It means that you don't work just with your tutor, but you work with other professionals. And uh, working with other professionals in brainstorming and giving inputs on your project, it really helps to find the best mm -hmm. creative process for the project. So um, yeah, th this is the added value. It's not just be linked with uh, experts and uh, uh, people that, I mean, are script doctors uh, or creative consultants. It's really be, been working with other professionals and receiving inputs mm -hmm. from them. Mm -hmm. You agree? I don't have anything to add. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's also learning from each other's uh, uh, difficulties and mistakes. That's it. <laughs> because yeah. if, you know, if one of your peers has made a mistake, you, you will make sure not mm -hmm. to repeat that mistake, yeah. which is... Also because when you're working on a project, at one point you are really in a cage. You don't know how to develop anymore. So you really need uh, somebody that looks at the project from outside and gives you some suggestions. So it's so both enlightening and demanding because the first panel said it's a very demanding experience for you to you accomplish all your deadlines and um, accepting the criticism and uh, 
Yeah, you really need to be open mind to do this kind of things because otherwise it will be a nightmare. <laughs> so you really have to welcome inputs and be ready and also to be generous in giving suggestions because otherwise it makes no sense. Mm -hmm. I just re realized that being a producer is very lonely job. You are closed up in your own office and not really having much social uh, interchange. So this gives you a thing that um, when, when you come to some such projects that you realize that you are not alone. We are all, all on the same boat and w you have immediately friends that you can uh, refer to and uh, get in touch with when you need it. Mm -hmm. you, you're talking about uh, projects that seem like a handcrafted and how, how important do you find these places to be in this context of big audiovisual players like Netflix and Amazon and they're working like a huge corporations and going back to the basics writing and in close spaces with uh, some kind of uh, arty uh, thinking of, of movies you think it's important just to yeah I think having uh yeah, also with Torino Film Lab, for example, you are, uh, as a producer, you also have time also with your director mm -hmm. to to work on your project and you have time to really dive into the development of your project without any pressure from the outside. You're, you're in a bubble and you can really focus uh, on your work and I think that's, that's one of the best things about being in a lab. Mm -hmm. um, and developing your project there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and because of these platforms, I think that at the moment the competition is really, really high. Mm -hmm. So if you are able to work in one of these training programs or in one, be part of these networks, you really can guarantee that your idea, um, not it's not the best, I don't want to say this, this but th that really can meet the best development as possible. Mm -hmm. And this is really important because uh, now at the moment uh, stakeholders are, can listen to ideas in three, four minutes. So you really need to be sure that you can present your idea fast and in the best way possible way. So um, it really helps you to Mm, to build a product that can meet industry requirements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in a way, we want to support the creativity <coughs> uh, because sometimes you are just squeezed in the middle of these wheels of the system that is coming, industry is kind of melting you. And uh, we want to draw you out again, <laughs> give you time to rethink if you are back on your track what you originally wanted and not doing things because this hel hel brings me money quickly, but we really support the uh, creative documentary films and being unique in this way. And, and so, yes, great meeting uh, other industry people, but be careful not to be squeezed in into space that you don't want to be. Mm -hmm. And what about the requirements to, to apply and to be selected? You've, you said to be open-minded and to be willing to work with other people and be op very open to others' opinions. But what do projects need to have in order to apply to Film Torino Film Lab and Festival of Rotterdam and your first time in Something that maybe sounds um, basic, but you really need to, to have good English. Mm -hmm. This is a really important requirement because you will work in English, you will write in English. And so it's really important. And um, I mean, we are project based. So we try to make to select the projects that uh, that um, we try to make a selection of proje projects that are quite different, but also that are really strong. So um, if you have a good idea and you are ready to jump in on this train, on this journey, why not? I mean, it's the, the important thing is to be ready to work hard mm -hmm. because it's really intensive. And uh, it's not just attending three workshops during the year, but there are a lot of homework to do. There are a lot of tasks that you are required to do. Mm -hmm. You have to work a lot. And also, I mean, you, you, you need to have passion on that. It put passion on your project because at one point maybe you will have to defend it. So um, you really need to, to be brave. Mm -hmm. 
So for the lab, we don't do an open selection, but we work with partners that can be national institutions or regional institutions. In Spain, we have a partnership with Catalan Film and TV, but also with the Screen La Incubadora. And that, that works absolutely great because they know the regions very well. They know the producers working there very well. So we work, uh, uh, sometimes we work also together in selecting the producers. And for us, it's really important that uh, your your ambitions are really international so you want to work on co-productions either as a co-producer or as a producer and you're really ready to take your company to that next step um, or your projects to that ne next step should i say a little short on cinema yes. as well yes so for our co-production market we really look at your projects and your project presentations um, for us, you can be a first or second time working with a first or second time director, that doesn't really matter, as long as you as a producer have some experience in international co-producing, so we, we can see, we know that you will have uh, um, yeah, the backing also with your national institutions to get the financing there. Um, but for us, it's really important to get into the head of the director, the director statement is very, very much key, and also previous work. So make sure the previous work you send in is previous work uh, um, that really sort of fit the vision of the director, that really shows uh, their mind and their artistic uh, ideas. Uh, and of course, good English, making sure everything is complete. Be open on the financing plan. Uh, we asked the fi we asked details on the financing plan, not because we want proof that everything is there, but we would we want to see your strategy and we want to see uh, with what countries you want to work with, for example. So make sure that's strong, and also you as a producer, your producer statement, why you want to work on this project, what makes you passionate about this project. For us, that's very important too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so f first recommendation is read selection criteria. <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazed when reading the applications, like, what? <laughs> uh, we have only the like minimum requirement is to have at least one finished feature or mid-length documentary, which was released. And you would be surprised that many applicants don't meet this criteria, it's amazing. So uh, the, we are not a uh, uh, program for uh, students or recent graduates. We are really for people who want to work further on and have some reference so we can see what kind of uh, uh, documentary you want to do or the producers want to do. Uh, on the other side, on the high level, there is no limit. I was also surprised to receive uh, applications for very acclaimed uh, producers. And when I go to ask them, so why do you think you need us? Because you are really a great producer, successful in your country. The answer is yes. Uh, I know a lot about um, the production and distribution in my own country, but I want to get international. And this is the way to help. So. Um, we don't have any limit on age, on the limit on your experience, but the minimum is to have at least one feature or mid-length documentary finished. And what kind of professional approach to Torino, Rotterdam and Jiglava? Has it changed in the last years? You have a very, a very specific profile of a professional attending to these hubs and spaces? because we see very different types of people here. Well, for feature films, as we develop and work on uh, first and second features, we have to say that uh, there are quite emerging talents, uh, script writers and producers. On television, I have to say that we started with mm, uh, as we don't have any kind of um, any kind of criteria uh, about uh, first or second feature project development we accept uh, we, we really choose good ideas um, I have to say that the level of professionals applying to series lab that is the program to, for TV series uh, has increased a lot in the last years because I see that many script writers that used to work on feature films now they are starting working on TV series um, so maybe they have experience on feature film themes projects and they're starting to write for television and um, and they understand that it's much much more complicated 
but uh, I mean, uh, at least they, they have the basis. And uh, from the producer side, I have to say that um, has producing a TV series project, it's much, much difficult. Uh, there are a lot of uh, international big production companies that apply to, TV, to series lab. Uh, but what, meanwhile, we don't have huge production companies that apply to the other pro programs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, for us, like I said before, we our main focus is emerging producers, but the what you say is also applies. Like sometimes we get very experienced producers from their own country, but with a lot of local experience. So f uh, it's it's really the international aspect that then comes into play. Um, in terms of sort of the focus of the producers in the lab, most of them work in independent film, but I know that I think almost half of them also work in TV or do more commercial projects on the side and we incorporate that into our program as well uh, under uh, company management, sort of how do you manage these different uh, strands in your own company and how do you keep your company healthy working on those different uh, things? Mm -hmm. So for Emerging Producers program, it's mainly producers mm -hmm. only, 100% producers. But we have also other activities that uh, we organize during our festival. And it focuses also on uh, pr um, directors, also for the team. So so there is a, we have a program called Ihlava Academy where you can uh, bring your program project together with director, producer, uh, DOP with the with the crew, and uh, also we organize a program for festival uh, organizers, which is also a great part of the program. I love it, and uh, we have special focus on experimental film because um, also we have our international documentary film festival is giving big space for experimental and hybrid film. So this is another also industry program that we want to help people uh, with this kind of experience, how to distribute this experimental film, which is not easy. So these kind of things we try to develop mm -hmm. while uh, in Ihlava. So we have the requirements, we have the profile, and how does the networking and the fundraising in your spaces work? Uh, mainly the networking, I think the networking is the key when you when attending to, to, to these spaces. Uh, you could just give us like a Five cents. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, all our programs they hand with a, a pitching session in front of industry representatives. Uh, feature Lab and Script Lab, that are the programs for feature films, they hand uh, with the um, meeting event that is our co production marketing uh, in Turin. So there is, um, there is a pitching session in front of uh, our guests, and after there are one to one meetings. And uh, while the Series Lab has uh, it has a different market, so we organize a pitching session during Series Mania. That it's the, I think at the moment, the main co-production market in Europe for TV series. And after we organize one-to-one -one meetings after. So I mean, you can um, take an, uh, you can network and maybe find co-producers among the network, among the alumni, but you can also have the chance to present your project in front of the industry in front of the, uh, the big audience. So this is, I think, the, the most important thing of the full lab. Mm -hmm. uh, with Rotterdam Lab, because it takes place during the festival, it's five days. The first day is really focused on making everyone feel at home and comfortable. So you, you, we start with a speed dating session amongst each other. The next day we have pitching training. So you're all warmed up, and the best part and, uh, of Rotterdam Lab is that it's so closely tied to Cinemart. So we have a curated guest list coming to the festival every year. It's between six and eight hundred guests, and these are all the the bigger player in the in the independent film industry. Uh, so by the time they come in, you already have sort of you're already there with your group. You're already warmed up, and we make sure that you'll join these professional for every breakfast, lunch, drinks. Um, so you're fully sort of, you have full access to everything we organize for our cinema guests. So we, we foster the network in the group, but also with our uh, international guests coming to the festival. 
Uh, I have to get into more complex thing because it's uh, networking on many levels. Um, first is networking between or oh, among the producers. I don't know if it is now right time to show you our catalog. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we always uh, produce this beautiful catalog, <laughs> and uh, each pro producer has a profile in it. Uh, which doesn't uh, say only biography and filmography, but more about the personality of the producer. It uh, tells you what kind of book he reads and uh, who is his favorite um, artist and music. There is a YouTube link to his music, a verb that um, or word that uh, describes the person, animal, and so on. So you get more information about the person as such, and it helps also um, <coughs> not only the participants but also other uh, professionals to look at the the pr people from other perspectives than just um, producers. And that we believe that this help uh, to start co-productions because you want to work with people that you like. And you know already if you like the person because there is a favorite film that you share with or so. So this is one, one uh, tool that we um, do every year. I have more uh, catalogs if you want to take with you. And uh, second level is uh, with other professionals coming to uh, Ihlava International Documentary Film Festival. I think I said it's the same networking, lunches, dinners. Uh, we um, bring um, jury members who are directors of big festivals for, for, for uh, networking events and so on. Also, we have another uh, activity in Ihlava which is called uh, Ex Oriente Film Workshop, which is project based. And their second session is in Ihlava, so we all organize speed dating between uh, our group of participants and their group of participants. And it's not only in Ihlava because we have two sessions. Thank, I have to give tribute to Creative Europe Media because for the first time ever we are supported by by media and we could uh, afford to establish the second session which takes place um, in February at the beginning of uh, Berlinale. There is another week of uh, program and we organize a big um, kind of like a drink event or cocktail party for uh, professionals uh, and introducing our emerging producers. And I also forgot that pitching forum is not forum, but it's a pitching of producers in Ihlavo to all the professionals. So in a big hall, they pitch themselves and they practice for that. Okay, and what about the, uh, the counterpoints of uh, attending these labs? Do you think, I have asked, the, I have asked this in the first panel, the standardization of projects that you always invest in and helping to develop projects that are really the same, or do you think that's not true? No, um, what I can say is that uh, we, mm, we really make a lot of attention in the selection process and in choosing the readers and the selection committee that we select the projects. We also have some uh, um, scouters. Mm. Uh, does it exist? Scouts, yeah. yeah. Uh, people that make scout <laughs> all around the world searching for projects. So we really try to uh, have a selection that... Um, that, it's, that meets really different requirements. Uh, especially for TV series, we don't have any kind of restriction in terms of gender or uh, um, length of the of the the project. So we really try to have uh, the best variety possible. And as the selection is uh, followed by different people, they can put their taste on it. So it, it's it's really the best way to guarantee the, the best variety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not project based, but what I what I can say is the the only risk I can really see is that you you can enter these labs in different stages with your projects from a very early stage, still a very long stage, and you can go to different labs. Um, the the only problem I could see is that at one point you need to stop going to labs and go and go out there and make the film. Uh, um, find that security. So that's the risk I, I could see with uh, with the labs um, that you just do all of them because you can. Um, but yeah, that. Yes, it can be overexposure. Mm -hmm. Kind of that. The, then the the experts are watching your films for tenth time and they okay. I'm I saw it last year and it hasn't developed. It's still the same trailer. 
so it needs to be refreshed yeah. and work. <laughs> yeah, especially for the yeah, for where, the where you have these public yeah, pitching yeah. forums. You know, it's always the the sales agent, the same people. Same they people. travel from mm -hmm. yeah, and if if they see your project for the fifth time and nothing really has uh, bored already, yeah. Yeah. they're in their comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't see any uh, counterparts for uh, for emerging producers because I think all the labs and pro uh, or workshops and make sense. As Inka said, maybe not now, but for the future, you make the contact, and mm -hmm. that's that's the key point. And what happens after uh, they attend to the to the labs? Do you track the careers? Do you track the projects? Do you invite them over just to join maybe the mentoring or as professionals? Yeah, yeah, we we really take care about the projects. Uh, first of all, for our communication uh, strategy, we want to give visibility to the projects once that. They are realized uh, once that they travel, they go to festivals, markets, whatever. And um, we really take care about our, our alumni um, because we organize uh, um, uh, annual meetings where they can uh, come to touring, they can meet each other, and they can have uh, even more activities. And um, what we do is also to use them as professional <laughs> after. <laughs> so most of our tutors at the moment are uh, alumni, because when we see a talent and uh, we really see that uh, others can benefit from their uh, knowledge and from their passion, we want to work with them. I can tell you that 40%, um, like to give some numbers, uh, of our tutors are ex-alumni. Our attendants. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think in the lab we repeat every day that a lot of co-productions are born from uh, that year, that edition. <laughs> I think we start every morning. Um, and we invite um, all the participants of the year to come back to Cinemart as a guest uh, the following year. We have partnerships with Khan, for example, so we have a few badges uh, for our lab participants to go to the workshop there. And we invite them to, we go to several festivals and if we track all the labbies, we stay in touch and we meet, uh, um, we try to meet as, as much as we can. Uh, as well for Cinemart, we keep track of the projects. We also rely on the producers feeding us with information because as soon as you start going into production, um, you might forget to, to update, so we love updates as well. And uh, of course, we, we track all the talents we foster uh, when their films are ready to play in our festival as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. We also kind of boast with our alumni because when when they have some success, uh, we try, we look for it and share it, and uh, and we want to promote them as well. So uh, we are always happy when uh, the producers become producers on the move, or if their film is in Cannes or winning the prize in Berlin, we always uh, keep uh, an eye on it and um, promote it. So let's talk about those uh, successful projects. Uh, oh my God. Uh, that was I the next thought question, about it, <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't have. I think that the most uh, significant example that we have at the moment is uh, Touch Me Not, mm -hmm. the movie that won uh, Berlin last year. I don't know who watched it, but it's a really difficult film. And uh, I, um, the director spent seven years to make it. Uh, and I think, and I, I, I can honestly say that without the lab, she wouldn't have been able to make it and to go to festivals and to win the, the award. Because it's a movie that otherwise cannot meet uh, the audience. And uh, so I think that um, also thanks to, uh, to, to her tutors and to her um, um, colleagues, she found the, the, the strength, the, the, the passion to go to the to, to to realize the project, so but there are so many cases. Uh, it's just one of them. <laughs> yeah, it's so uh, difficult to to name one. I remember a project called Monos really well that played in uh, Berlinale. I think that one took nine years to come to fruition. It was in Cinemart. The producer attended Rotterdam Lab as well, um, and in the end. Uh, it took seven co-production countries and 
a, a lot of problems, uh, uh, but they got the film made and they couldn't have finished the film if they didn't build on those relations. They, they met either in Rotterdam or in the lab or um, it, it, it fortifies your project and your role also as a, as a producer. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of my favorites, yeah. It's a good one. Well, uh, because we are not project-based, but we also uh, have, have the um, Touch Me Not uh, film as a, uh, produced by two emerging producers, among other producers. But for me also it's a great success when we get the, the information back from our producers saying that thanks to your workshop I got the courage to leave the big uh, established uh, production company and start up my new company, my new new um, uh, life. This is great and I'm always happy for that, they get that courage. Um, some of them say that changed my life. This is also great success for us. <laughs> and great is when they go around and, and spread the word and thanks to them we get uh, other applicants for next year because uh, it shows that it makes sense to attend these kind of workshops. Mm -hmm. you, you, you think that ex -Saloni are talking to people that want to apply to your lab, that that network works between... Yeah. They are the best promoter ever. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In in fact, we want to guarantee to offer them the best experience they can have. Also, because it's I mean, it's like with with a good movie. If it's a good movie, you will talk about that about mm -hmm. with your friends. So if you had a good experience there, you you will talk. Uh, you will promote it. Otherwise, not. Mm -hmm. Hay alguna pregunta hasta la fecha? Si eh, alguno no la quiere hacer en inglés, intentaré traducirla, si no, sigo con la artillería, ¿no? Sí. Uh, and to, to a more personal level, what do you need to have to attend to a lab? Not as a professional, but to a more personal level. What do you, what do I have to expect if I attend to one of your labs? Um, been isolated, I, I think, but you speak with a lot of people like you, which are struggling to develop a project. Do you need patience? Patience, a lot of patience. Uh, you need time. It seems stupid, but I mean, you really need time to work on it because it's not just about uh, being selected to our prog program, but that, as I said, you need to, to work on it. You need... Um, Do you have any breakdowns during the labs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it depends. Uh, um, uh, script lab and feature lab, they are six months long. But I mean, you just attended the three workshops. Uh, during, uh, between the workshops, you are at home doing your own stuff. And uh, series lab, it's uh, uh, four months long. Mm -hmm. It's even more intensive. But you have a lot, of, lot to do. Because at the end of the program, you need to have uh, the script, uh, you need to have the financial plan, you need to have the concept, maybe the pilot. So, I mean, you, there are a lot to do. Mm -hmm. And um, y y you also need to, as I say, you need to be open minded and, and um, really trust in your project. Because without that, I mean, I saw so many people that after the, wars, the first workshop, they were crying, saying, okay, my project doesn't have any sense. And the second workshop is even worse because you arrive at the workshop thinking about having answers, but they destroyed your answers. So you are <laughs> the beginning of everything. I mean, you really need to have passion and to trust in your idea. This is the, the most important thing. Yeah, and, and also be, be prepared for the fact that your project might come out completely different or with a completely different strategy. And I, I myself joined in Eavitized at Bind as a, as a participant. Um, and I really felt that you need to be able to clear your schedule, really focus. And it's not only about your project. You have to give feedback and uh, um, work with your fellow producers as well on their projects. Um, so you need to be prepared for that. Um, and openness, I think that's the, mm -hmm. and, and really share, and share your hardships because otherwise you, yeah, w uh, you can get a lot from sharing your own hardships and uh, advice or feedback from your fellow participants. Yeah, the same. Your willingness to learn. Or, or not only that you want to gain from the, from the project, but you give yourself 
you give feedbacks, but you also share your uh, experience. And also I realized one more success story kind of thing that came out as a side effect of this program that we never thought of it and expected, that the producers be, uh, became uh, distributors of other films in their own country. So you, I don't meet uh, and make friends with a Spanish producer and you, you love his film and you start uh, distributing it in your own country. So this is also a great um, tool. Mm -hmm. In shaping your programs, how do you choose your mentors, your experts to, to give feedback? Because I think it's a work in progress. You're changing and, 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 and adding people in each edition. Yeah, we have a team of tutors that we use to, to contact, but we also like to change to avoid the, the risk that you said before to develop all the projects in the same way. Um, but I have to say that it's also personal. Uh, I mean, th these are people that you're going to work with along. So if there isn't, also because we don't follow the tutors day by day, we are not with them in the room or working with the participants. So we really need to trust them and uh, uh, about their work. This is really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we have a, a mix of programs. We, we evaluate the program every year with the participants and there are some sort of steady sessions that everyone loves and come back every year. Uh, but we also develop new programs and we also try to think out of the box, like inviting someone with a background in law and specialized in negotiation mm -hmm. that comes in or a psychologist uh, uh, working on how to deal with pressure and how to deal uh, uh, with conflicts uh, when you're in production, for example. So it, it depends sort of on the on the program every year. Yeah, the same, absolutely the same. I think because it's our job and we love it, we don't want to copy paste every year the same stuff. So we look for new kind of people and initiatives and also the same like we brought social sociologists on board and mm -hmm. and or or there is a great new film that we really love so we invite the producer to speak about it and it, it changes every year mm -hmm. and it, it, you've shared like a, a, success, a success story but do you have a failure story in your in your lab someone that just put behind a project because i don't know that happens we forget about that <laughs> right <laughs> It's no. that, sort that of happens. percentage sort of <laughs> yeah, yeah. out of your yearly selection that doesn't get made. Yeah. No, of course, there are fi films and TV series that never come to life, of course. But it really depends, on, as we said before, on the passion and on the work that you do after the, 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 um, the workshops and the, uh, the labs. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the real work starts after. So if you are not ready to work and to to fight for your project, I mean nothing happens. But it's be because of the workload, because of the opinions, the the the, the criticism, the deadlines, the environment. Uh, yeah, sometimes I mean you cannot find. I mean um, we work a lot with the script writers and authors. Sometimes they can't find a producer that is um, ready to invest on their projects and to help them to 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 to, to make it uh, real. Um, sometimes it happened that uh, co-producers or uh, co-authors they fight and they couldn't develop the project, it happened. As everybody said, uh, co-productions are, ma are um, marriage. Mm -hmm. So it sometimes it happens. Uh, but really, I don't have that. Uh, <laughs> that could maybe be I've censorship if your tackle is like a sensitive subject and you can't secure the financing from national resources and the economy is low, you know, it's, it can have many, many factors. But that's a piece play. of advice you would say to a, to a, a student on the lab that your, your project is have these risks, it's difficult to, yeah. right? Yeah, we, we don't want to say change your project or change the subject, but you could maybe uh, be more smart about it by being less literal or, and, and that's where a script tutor is, is mm. great as well. Uh, um, you know, that can be advice, but... You don't have to make projects for your own, of course. So, I mean, if it's too linked to your point of view or too 
self-made. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's better to, to, to change it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, and to sum it up, um, why would any of the attendants to this panel should apply to uh, your lab? Brief version. Because we don't have Spanish applications. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we discussed this before we got here, that we wanted to tell you all <laughs> to apply because there is a few Spanish applicants for uh, the co-production market, for example. Uh, Olivier Laxe was the last one in 2017, but also in, in applications, it's, it's, uh, it's low and uh, we... We need We're curious to your stories. We have a lot <laughs> of applications from Spain. I think thanks to our alumni that because they um, promoted it, especially in, in Barcelona. And uh, this year I had the email asking, um, I'm from Madrid, can I apply? <laughs> 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 yes, please. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, um, we, we are welcome to apply. The problem is that we select only one uh, producer per country. Mm -hmm. And there, every year is more um, applic uh, I have to say more countries applying than 18. We have 18 uh, countries each year, and one of that is always a guest country outside of Europe. So 17 European country every year, and one person per country. So the competition is tough. So quick update: you need uh, English. You need uh, to read your requirement form. Be very open-minded, and be ready to work very hard work, and to have a great experience or a life-changing experience, yeah. right? No, hello, I just wanted to add that, as Inka said, we are partners, we are from Catalan Films. So if anyone is, um, wants to apply for the lab, we can advise them. We have every year two producers in the lab, we are very happy. I have attended the festival for two years, and my colleague also, and it's very nice. All the networking bars, so we really recommend it. And with emerging producers, we used to be partners. We are not, unfortunately, anymore. But as Jarmila said, I think it, there has been six Catalan producers selected. So if anyone wants to try. In eight editions only. Yeah. So it's nice. I mean, you can contact us, and we can help you with applications, deadlines, and everything. Thank you. Thank you so much for the panel.